All right. Hi, everybody. I am here to talk to you about what discussion board posts are going to look like going forward. Um, so this is really going to be the heart of the class, and I kind of want to talk to you about what to expect and how to have meaningful reflective discussions. So, so far, the discussion board has been used primarily to kind of check in on the ideas that you're having, get you to think about what you might want to talk about before you come to class, but we haven't really used the Canvas space to create uh, an ongoing reflective discussion. So what we've done so far in Canvas, um, you need to completely rethink that. We're going to be doing it totally differently going forward. Uh, please excuse if you can hear my kids in the background. I'm trying to keep them out of here, but um, you might hear a few little voices. All right. So um, hold on one second. All right. So first of all, what are the basic expectations or requirements for the week. The way I've set it up is I'm going to have kind of one discussion on a theme for the entire week. So we're really only focusing on one thing for a week, whether that is like one chapter from a textbook or um, or a few chapters from an ethnography. Um, I'm providing the same guidelines for both my classes. So I'm speaking both to the transnational students and the med anthro students here. Um, okay, so first of all, there's going to be a main discussion question on the theme. Each module, there'll be um, a main discussion question, usually one per week. Every so often, I'll want to add a second one if there's something really different that we're grappling with. Um, and on this main question, it's going to often have several parts and be fairly involved. I'm going to ask you to respond to the original post in a thoughtful way by Tuesday at midnight. So that means by Tuesday of every week. Um, you should have done your reading, which should be okay because you're reading along, um, you know, you're hopefully you've gotten a, a little bit of a head start here. Um, so by Tuesday at midnight, you're going to post your first uh, response to the discussion, and then you'll have the whole next week to read until the following Tuesday for what's coming up. Um, I And I expect everyone to post their own original response to this by Tuesday at midnight. Then I'll have follow-up questions. Uh, most days from Wednesday to Friday, I'll, I've prepared some extra questions that I want, want you to think about as we're moving through the readings as we go through the week. Um, so I'll be posting a follow-up question in the weekly thread discussion itself. I'm not going to start all new discussion threads because I want to be able to see the whole conversation in one place. So when I add a new question, I will sort of highlight it and make it bold so that when you go dip into the discussion, you'll see, oh, Ellen's posted a new question and I can respond to that one. Um, you're going to be asked to post six quality posts for week, per week and this includes the response to the main question. So your week might look like one response to my main question and then posing your own question or two responses to, to your classmates and then they respond to you and you respond back to them in a thoughtful kind of engaged way. So however that, that shakes out, you can post multiple responses to the main question. Um, you can post one only and then only respond to people's questions to you after that, however that shakes out. But I'm going to be look, counting, you know, I'm going to be using a rubric counting to see that you had six quality posts. So if you if you really like someone's idea and you just comment like, I, I love this, this is so great, thanks for posting it, that doesn't count as one of your quality posts. Um, that's just sort of a, a short, brief comment. And then I want you to post on at least three different days during the week. So from Sunday to Saturday, you'll be posting on at least three different days during the week. Um, and the reason for this is because I don't want you to just dip into the conversation once and then, you know, see what's there and answer everything that's there and then put all your six down just to get them over with and leave. I want you to be coming back so that we're having an ongoing conversation um, so that you're responding to people's questions so that if someone asks you a question, you're giving a response to it. And so you should um, post at least between Sunday and Saturday, post on at least three different days during the week. Um, so the discussion board works best when we're having a real conversation. So that works best when you aren't primarily um, answering questions that I'm asking. I will be asking follow-up questions and you can always respond to them if you want to, or you can respond to students' responses of them. But um, read everybody else's post. Ask questions. That's what the engagement looks like. So I'm really, like, it's as if you're sitting in class listening to each other speak, but but it's on this discussion board. So um, you, you and the best, the best posts are the ones that um, ask good questions and um, 
And so, of course, like if someone in class asked you a question, it would be rude not to respond to them. We're going to think about this like that as well. And then you'll see, I'll show you the discussion rubric at, in a moment um, with more details on how to receive full marks for discussion. But in this PowerPoint, I'm talking about what makes a quality post. In a moment, I'll get there. All right, so reflecting. This is a really um, important part of what we're going to be doing here and something that sometimes we don't get to do. Like if, if you're trying to think of what an advantage is of, I mean, I'd rather be with you in person, but because I can't, and an, an advantage of this online format for discussion is everybody can really think through what they want to say and then have thoughtful responses. So if we take these discussions seriously, then the reflection piece can happen in a way that, you know, we can't always resolve questions or problems that we're grappling with in one hour during class or 80 minutes, but over the course of a week, we have a better shot at getting at that. So um, that's what this allows. So the basic guideline for participation in these discussions is simple, reflect. Take your time to consider the question at hand, to do any research you feel is, is necessary because backing up your um, points is always more useful, and to formulate your views and questions as clearly and convincingly as you can. That's why we have the conversation spread over multiple days um, on a single or multiple discussion threads so that we can have this ongoing conversation, which is why I'm asking you to dip in at least three times to the discussion. Uh, the advantage of reflective discussions is you have ample time to research, reflect, and edit before posting your comment. Um, and the main thing I want you to think about and the sort of main learning that's going to happen that doesn't always happen in class, and you, you'll be able to take these skills, I hope, into the classroom next time you're there, um, is to move the discussion forward. So an advantage of this format of discussion is it lasts an entire week. It helps you learn how to move discussion forward on a particular issue. Um, there are two kinds of general comments that help move a discussion forward. The first is to confirm what's been said. So you know, you could say something like, your idea about raising children really makes sense to me. Or you could say something like, thanks for sharing. That was certainly a challenging experience for you. Um, that, that moves a discussion forward in a sort of inactive way. The, the best way to move it forward is to deepen the discussion, say something like, could you say more about what you mean by socialism? Or, um, you know, for myself, I don't see a difference between this theory and this other idea. And then the person can kind of respond to that. Um, so here's some specific guidelines about how you can move the discussion forward. So sort of some tips. First is when you express your opinion, you need to support it in a way that makes others give serious thought to it. Second is express a different point of view, even if it's not your own. So if you want to sort of try something out, like, but the, I, I read here, or this person argued that blah, 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 even if you don't agree with it, it can help move the discussion forward. Um, express a disagreement accompanied by an explanation. So you don't want to just disagree, but disagree and explain why, and that starts a conversation. Obviously, you want to do that respectfully, and we'll lay some ground rules out in a minute. Express a new insight you had accompanied by an explanation of what comment or text triggered it. Um, so reading Joe's post made me realize blah, blah, blah. Ask someone for further explanation and include why it would be helpful to you. So I didn't really get what you're saying here. Could you please explain it so that I can help me understand X, Y, Z? Uh, raise a new question that leads naturally from the current question. Um, you don't want to kill the current discussion flow, but f you can refocus it in a new direction. So we're trying to think and make connections here. Widen the context. For example, move toward the practical, the professional, family, career, politics, ethics, or faith, for example. So take this and say this, you know, this relating this to our own lives in these ways can start a really lively discussion as well. Um, there are two main ways to kill the progression of a discussion. The first is to think of it as an argument. Um, and the second is to try to win it. There's no winning this. We're just trying to grapple with these ideas and, and work through them together. Um, so a few protocols, kind of ground rules for the discussions. First of all, um, what you say should be clear. So proofread your posts and edit out errors. Try to try to make them quite polished. Um, if you're responding to a post by Jake, for example, start by your posting by saying Jake, and then restate the part of his opinion that you wanted to comment on. Like Jake, you said that CSBSGU needs a new art museum. In my opinion, I think it doesn't because of blah, 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 or I think it does because blah, blah, blah. So if we refer to people by name, just like we do in class, like what so-and-so just said made me think of this, and then you you go on from there. 
um, when you state an opinion, back it up with reasons or with sources. You rely on this is far more convincing than just saying really strong language like this is this has to happen or that this is the, the only way to do it, but without any evidence. Um, show respect for positions you take issue with. Mentioning the merits of opinions you disagree with before pointing to their short, shortcomings is always a good way to do that. Show the respect for the person. It's that or not that not necessarily even that you're talking to, but for persons or groups whose behaviors or views you find offensive. So state your criticism fairly and support them with evidence. Just posting inflammatory um, statements will not be helpful in moving the conversation forward. And so those will be removed. Uh, if you want to thank or praise others, state why a posting is significant. Thanks, I like that. If that's all you're saying, then you're not really moving the conversation forward. So you can say why it mattered to you, why you thought it was a good post. Uh, a few more protocols. So avoid questions that bog down the forward movement, like rhetorical questions such as, how long can this continue or what's becoming of this country? A rhetorical question is a question that doesn't really need an answer. Um, yes, no questions don't really forward the conversation or questions that are disguised as opinions, but in fact are, uh, sorry, disguised as questions, but in fact are opinions. Like, don't you think millennials are too entitled? Um, Prefer questions that ask for clarification or explanation. Like clarification would be like, Angie, you mentioned taking care of number one. Did you mean this is a good or a bad thing? Or explanation, Joe, I like your point about earning the trust of your employees. What are some good ways to do this? Uh, when you cite a source, tell us where we can find it. If you include a link, tell us what, what, what we're gonna find there and how the material relates to the conversation. If you submit a link that the information we're looking for is somewhere down the page. Tell us where to look for it or where to click. Um, and then up to the second to last day of each module, feel free to post, pose a question to anyone. And then please try to visit the discussion site on the last day to ensure that you've responded to any questions.